Welcome back everyone to the closing remarks here before we kick off our ecosystem portion of the program. We're live in Palo Alto for the Cube special presentation of SuperCloud 2. It's the second edition of the first one was in August. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Here to wrap up with our special guest analyst, George Gilbert, investor um, and industry legend, former colleague of ours, analyst at Wikibon. George, great to see you, Dave. You know, wrapping up uh, this day, what a phenomenal program. We had a contribution from industry, uh, vendors, industry experts, practitioners, and customers building and redefining their company's business model, rolling out technology for super cloud and multi-cloud, and ultimately you know, changing how they do data. And data was the theme today. So very, very great program. Before we jump into our favorite um, parts, let's give a shout out to the folks who make this possible. Free content's our mission. We'll always stay true to that mission. We want to thank VMware, Alcara, Chaos Search, Prosimo for, for being sponsors of this great program. We will have SuperCloud 3 coming up in a, in, a, in a month or so, or two months, we'll see, or sooner, we'll, we don't know. But it'll be more about security, but a lot more momentum. Okay, so that's- And, and don't, don't forget too, that we've, this program not going to end now. We've got a whole ecosystem speaks track, so still stay tuned for that. It's going to yeah, be- Yeah, and we got another 20 interviews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it. Well, you're going to hear from Sachs, Veronica Durgan. You're going to hear from uh, Western Union, Harveer Singh. You're going to hear from Ionis Pharmaceuticals, Nick Taylor, and, and, and Brian Gracely chimes in on SuperCloud. So he's the yeah. he's the man behind the, the Cloudcast. So yeah, and you know the, the practitioners are getting pay attention to also to the cloud networking interviews. A lot of change going on there that's going to be disruptive and actually change the landscape as well. Again, as SuperCloud progresses to be the next big thing, if you're not on this next wave, you'll drift with, as Pat Gelsinger says, yep. to kick off the closing segments. George, Dave, this is a wave that's been identified. Again, people debate the word all you want, SuperCloud. It is a gateway to multi-cloud eventually. It is the standard for new applications, new ways to do data. There's new computer science being generated and customer requirements being addressed. So it's the confluence of, you know, tectonic plates shifting in the industry, new computer science, seeing things like AI and machine learning and data at the center of it, and new infrastructure all kind of coming together. So to me, I, that's my takeaway so far. That is, the, that is the big story and it's going to change society and ultimately the business models of these companies. Well, we've had, ten, you know, you think about it, we came out of the financial crisis, we've had 10, 12 years despite the COVID of tech success Right, and just now, CIOs are starting to hit the brakes. And, and so my point is, you've had all this innovation building up for a decade, and you've got this massive ecosystem that is running on the cloud, and the ecosystem is saying, hey, we can add even more value by tapping best of breed across clouds. And you've got customers saying, hey, we need, we need help, we want to do more, and we want to point our business and our intellectual property, our software, our tooling, at our customers and monetize our data. So you have all these forces coming together and it's yeah. sort of entering a new era. George, I want to go to you for a second because you're a big con contributor to this event. Um, your interview with Bob Muglia with Dave was, um, I thought, a watershed moment for me to hear that the data apps, how databases are being rethought because we've been seeing a diversity of databases with Amazon Web Services, you know, promoting no, no one database rules the world. Now it's not one database kind of architecture that's fueling these new apps. What's your takeaway from this event? So if you, you keep your eye on this North Star where instead of building apps that are based on code, you're building apps that are defined by data coming off of things that are linked to the real world, like people, places, things, and activities. Then the idea is, and the example we use is, you know, Uber, but it could be, you know, Amazon.com is defined by stuff coming off data in the Amazon ecosystem or marketplace. And then, then the question is, and everyone was talking at different angles on this, which was, where does the data live? How much do you hide from the developer? You know, and when can you offer that? You know, and, and you started with Walmart, which was describing apps, traditional apps that are just code. And frankly, that's easier to make that cross cloud and you know essentially location independent. As soon as you have data, you need data management technology that a customer does not have the sophistication to build. And then the, then the argument was like, so how much can you hide from the developer who's building data apps? Um, Tristan's version was you take the modern data stack and you start adding these APIs that define business concepts like bookings, billings, and revenue, you know, or in the Uber example, like uh, drivers and riders, you know, and ETAs and prices. 
but those things execute still on the, on the data warehouse or data lake house. Then Bob Muglia was saying, you're not really hiding enough from the developer because you still got to say how to do all that. Um, and his vision is not only do you hide where the data is, but you define, you, do, you hide how to sort of get at all that code by just saying what you want. You define, you define how a car um, and how a driver and how a rider works, and then those things automatically figure out underneath the covers. So huge challenges, right? There's governance, the security, they could be big blockers to you know, the super cloud, but the industry's going to be attacking that problem. Well, what's your take? What's your favorite segment? Zamak Gandhi came on, she's starting in that company, exclusive news, that was a big notable moment for theCUBE. She launched her company. She pioneered the data mesh concept, and I think what George is saying, what uh, data mesh points to is something that we've been saying for a long time, that data is now going to flip the script on on how apps behave. So, and the Uber example I think is illustrated because people can relate to Uber, but imagine that for every business, whether it's a manufacturing business or retail or oil and gas or FinTech, they can look at their business like a game, almost gamify it with data. Rioters, cars, uh, you know, moving data around, the value of data. This is something that Adam Selesky te teased out at AWS days. So, What's your takeaway from this super cloud? Where are we in your mind? Well, Mr. Mock's big thing is data products and, and decentralizing your data architecture, but putting, putting data in the hands of domain experts who can actually monetize the data. And I think that's, to me, that's really exciting because look at da data products, financial industry has always been doing building data products. Mortgage-backed securities is a, da is a data product, but why should the financial industry have all the fun? I mean, virtually every organization can tap its ecosystem, build data products, take its internal IP and processes and software and point it to the world and actually begin to make money out. Okay, so let's go around the horn. I'll start, We're gonna, I'll get you guys some time to think. Next question, what did you learn today? I learned that, it, I think it's an infrastructure game. And talking to Kit Colbert at VMware, I think it's all about infrastructure refactoring. And I think the data is going to be an ingredient that's going to be operating system-like. I think you're going to see the infrastructure influencing operations that will enable super clouds to, to be real. And developers won't even know what a super cloud is because they'll be using it. It's the operations focus is going to be very critical. Just like DevOps movement started cloud native, I think you're going to see a data native movement. And I think infrastructure is critical as people go to the next level. That's my big takeaway today. And obviously the data conversation at the center, I think security data are going to be always active, horizontally scalable concepts, but every company is going to reset their infrastructure, how it looks and it's not set up for data and or things that they need to be agile on. It's going to be a non-star. So I think that's the cloud next gen. Uh, distributed computing. I mean, what came into focus for me was I think the hyperscalers are going to continue to do their thing, you know, and, and be very, very successful. And they've each, they're each coming at it from different approaches. We talk about this all the time in theCUBE. Amazon, the best infrastructure, you know, Google's got its, you know, data and AI thing and it's playing catch up and Microsoft's got this massive estate. Okay, cool, check. The next wave of innovation, which is coming from data, I've always said follow the data, that's where the, that's where the money's going to be, is going to come from other places. People want to be able to, organizations want to be able to share data across clouds, across their organization, outside of their ecosystem, and make money with that data sharing. They don't want to FTP it anymore, I got it, you take it. They want to work with live data in real time. And I think the edge, we didn't talk much about the edge today, is going to, even take that to a new level, real time inferencing at the edge, AI, and, and being able to do new things with data that we haven't even seen. We're playing around with ChatGPT, it's blowing our mind. And I think you're right, it's like when we first saw the browser, holy crap. This is going to change the world. Yeah, and the chat GDP, by the way, is, is going to create a wave of machine learning and data re refactoring for sure. But also, Howie Chu had an interesting comment. He was asked by a VC how much to replicate that. And he said it's in the hundreds of millions, not billions. Yeah. Now, if you ask that same question to how much does it cost to replicate AWS, the CapEx alone is unstoppable. They're already done. So, you know, the it's hyperscalers really are going to continue <laughs> to boom. I think they're going to drive the infrastructure. I think Amazon's going to be really strong at silicon and physics and every squeeze every ounce atom out of every physical thing and then get latency as your bottleneck and the rest is that all going to be. It blew me away, 100 million to create kind of an open AI, you know, competitor. 
Look at look at companies like Lacework. Some people right? have that much cash on the he, balance sheet. These are security <laughs> companies that have raised a billion dollars, right, to compete. Yeah. You know, so if you're not shifting left, what do you do with data? Shift up. <laughs> but you know, what you what did you learn, George? I'm listening to you, and I think you're you're helping me crystallize something, which is the software infrastructure to enable the data apps is wide open. The way Jamak described it is. Like if, if you want a data product, like a sales and operation plan, that is built on other data products, like a sales plan, which has a forecast in it, a demand, um, uh, it has a production plan, it has a procurement plan, and then a sales and operation plan is actually a composition of all those, and they call each other. Now in her current platform, you need to expose to the developer a certain amount of certain amount of mechanics on how to move all that data, when to move it, like what happens if something fails. Now, Mugly is saying, I can hide that completely, so all you have to say is what you want, and the underlying machinery takes care of everything. The problem is, Muglia's stuff is still a few years off, and Tristan is saying, I can give you much of that today, but it's got to run in the data warehouse. So there's trade-offs all different ways, but, but again, I agree with you, that the cloud platform vendors or the ecosystem participants who can run across cloud platforms and private inf infrastructure will be the next platform. And then the cloud platform is sort of where you run, run the big honking centralized stuff where someone else manages the operations. It, but Sounds like middleware to me, Dave. The key is, I'll just end on this, the yeah. key <laughs> is being able to get to the data, whether it's in a data warehouse or a data lake or an S3 bucket or an object yes. store. Oracle database, whatever. It's got to be inclusive. That is is critical to 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 execute on the vision that you just talked about because that data is in different systems, and you're not right. going to put it all into some new system. So creating middleware in the cloud—that yeah. sounds what it sounds like to it's me. Like <laughs> you discovered PaaS, <laughs> and, and it's a super PaaS. But it's it's platform services because PaaS connotes like a tightly integrated yeah. platform. Well, this is the real thing that's going on. We're going to see how this evolves. George, great to have you on, Dave. Thanks for the summary. I enjoyed this segment a lot today. This ends our stage performance live here in Palo Alto. As you know, we're live stage performance and syndicate out virtually. Our afternoon program is going to kick in now. You're going to hear some great interviews. We've got Chaos Search, uh, defining the network super cloud from Prosimo, future of cloud network like Alkira. We got uh, Saks, a retail um, comp company here. She's in, uh, Veronica Durgan. Um, we got um, Dave with Western Union. So a lot of customers, a pharmaceutical company, Warner Brothers, Discovery, media company, and then you know what's what is really needed for SuperCloud, good panels. So so stay with us for the afternoon program. It's part two of SuperCloud 2. This is a wrap up for our stage live performance. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante and George Gilbert here wrapping up. Thanks for watching and enjoy the program. <laughs>